honeybees are pretty important because they help to bring pollen to flowers. It's like they carry all the pollen and the pollen is a fruit. I think they're good. Yeah, they give out like honey. When most people think of bees, one specific species usually comes to mind. Honeybees, the black and yellow bugs that pollinate flowers and produce delicious honey. They're like one of the most important bugs to the environment. If we're out of honeybees, then like our resources will be depleted within like seven to ten years, so they play a very important role for sure. I feel like they're a really pivotal role. They're good. They're fantastic for the environment. I love them dearly. The presence of honeybees can detrimentally affect native pollinators if there aren't enough flowers. Wait, what? Hold on, let's rewind. Honeybees have become quite a popular bug in recent years. With insect populations in decline due to environmental factors like drought and pollution, you might have seen social media posts or signage supporting a movement to save the bees. But what many people don't know is that honeybees aren't the only species of bee out there. And as it turns out, their presence can have some serious consequences for the other pollinators that they share their resources with. So what is the truth about this beloved environmental mascot? Are honeybees actually bad for other bees? We set out to answer this very question. But what we found is a complex web of interconnected problems relating to the environment, agriculture, and even the food that we eat, all with the honeybee at the very center. So come with us on our mission to find out what's the buzz. This is Professor Sevan Suni, a pollination biologist at the University of San Francisco. We spoke to her to find out more about the role that honeybees play in the environment. I study how plants reproduce, but specifically how animals facilitate that by transferring pollen among different individuals. There are many animals that can pollinate. So hummingbirds, of course, are really important pollinators, moths, butterflies. We do think of honeybees as the quintessential bee, but there are 4,000 species of bees that are native to North America. There are 20,000 species of bees in total, globally. Honeybees are not native to North America. So how did this non-native species end up here, in our yards and farms? Well, humans have been keeping bees and consuming their honey for thousands of years. The species of bee we use today to produce honey and pollinate our crops is Apis mellifera, also known by its common name, the European honeybee. It wasn't until the 17th century that European settlers brought them here to North America. And the question of how their presence impacts native species is one that's just beginning to be examined. About a decade ago, this was a really controversial subject. People didn't actually think that having honeybees around was a problem for native pollinators. So if there are enough floral resources, it's totally fine because everybody can have food. But if there aren't enough floral resources, then that means that honeybees, because they live in colonies with thousands of individuals, really can go dominate a food resource and then outcompete uh, the native species. After hearing from Professor Suni, it was clear that the presence of honeybees could cause some serious problems for their wild cousins. To dig deeper, we talked to a professional beekeeper located in San Rafael, just north of the Golden Gate. She shared her own thoughts on the impact of honeybees, but also shed some light on some of the positives of beekeeping. My name is Bonnie Morse, and um, I'm co-owner of Bonnie Bee & Company. We started in 2011 and our intention was to provide a local source of honeybees. Most of my clients that I work with are very involved with their beekeeping and they just want a hand, they want to learn more. One of the big differences between the honeybees and the native bee species is that because honeybees um, uh, have perennial nests, they, they need to be able to store food. The native bees don't need to store food. Most, over 80% of our native bees are solitary bees and they're ground nesting. And they're usually only active during a finite period of any season. So it seems that honeybees have a lot of characteristics that set them apart from our local species of bees. But the question still remains, how does the presence of honeybees affect them? And the answer is anything but simple. The impact of honeybees on native pollinators is going to depend on a few things. It's going to depend on the amount of floral resources, and it's going to depend on what kinds of pathogens, like viruses and other pathogens honeybees might be carrying. Think of flowers as dirty doorknobs. They can leave diseases on flowers and then get picked up by other bees. So we know a little bit. We know that there are some viruses that can infect both honeybees and other pollinators, and so they can be transferred on flowers. So all of these are, are really active areas of research. Lots of challenges. Apart from that, you know, the drought, that's causing problems in forage. Wildfires, the smoke causes problems. 
depending on the year and what burned and when it burned, um, it resulted in anything from catastrophic losses, chemicals. I mean, even here in the urban environment, there are way too many chemicals used in, in people's gardens and bees can get themselves into trouble. It's hard to keep them alive. Despite the environmental challenges that beekeepers face today, there seems to be no shortage of people wanting to get into this niche hobby. There has been an explosion in the interest of backyard beekeepers. In 2005, there was 25 members of the Marin County Beekeepers. Now there are 350. I would say that the interest in, in resurgence in beekeeping, um, even though maybe is putting a little pressure in some areas just by the number of hives, it's leaving in its wake something even more important, which is people reconnecting with nature. Um, from the bees, people start paying more attention to what products they're using in their yard because they're concerned about their bees. They're concerned about what's flowering in their yard that might help support their bees. And it's really nothing short of a, a social or revolution in a sense of like reconnecting with nature and understanding. I think in general, if people are practicing backyard beekeeping and there are enough floral resources around, then it's a great thing because it's getting people interested in biodiversity and um, pollination. Other beekeepers seem to agree that even with the potential impact of honeybees on native pollinators, there are a lot of positives that they can bring too. This is Matt, a co-founder of Bay Area Bee Company. Yeah, so Bay Area Bee Company, um, you know, we, we picked our name on purpose. Everything we do is about the health of the bee, the environments that they live in. We have thousands of hives all over the Bay Area. We've got them in Berkeley, we've got them in Oakland, we've got them in San Francisco. So it's a moving number, but it's a lot of bees. Um, I, I have seen no challenge that the honeybees make to the, to the natural population. And you put honeybees in a spot, they cause everything within a mile to do better. Um, so when you cause the floor to do better, then you're gonna cause the native population to have more food available to them. And that's, that's what I've seen again and again with honeybees. Um, you know, the, the, the bumblebees and the other things do better. To show just how much the presence of honeybees can help boost the local ecology, Matt took us to another one of his hives that has dramatically changed its surroundings for the better. This is just a great example of uh, what bees do to an area. This, this hill right here collapsed. It was, um, it was just sand and dirt. There was no growth on it. There was no life on it. So we brought the bees here. I mean, for honey, sure, they make a great honey, but really to just bring this back to life. And so you're seeing all the sea of purple, the lavender, the echium, the rosemary, all the native uh, shrubs, the bees brought that back to life. This is after six, seven years. You had a hill that, that collapsed, uh, that was just dirt and some grass, and now it's full of life. It stopped eroding and it's full of native and honeybees um, enjoying all the great things to eat. Um, I've seen bees here in the last decade around our honeybees that I never knew existed in this town. And I credit our honeybees with, with bringing them back. Um, the, the flora is better um, as a result of the honeybees. And that means that flora is better for hummingbirds, butterflies, native bees, whatever it might be. They all benefit. Almost 90% of all flowering plants are pollinated by animals, and bees are probably the most important pollinator of, of wild plants. Without pollinators, there would be cascading negative effects on ecosystems. The world would be a very, very bland, um, not colorful, uh, and scary place. So we really, need, we really need pollinators in order to ensure that the world stays green. While pollinators certainly play a vital role in the ecosystem, we also depend on them for an essential part of our day-to-day -day lives, food. The statistic that we often hear is one out of every three bites of food that we eat is directly tied to pollination by bees, and it's usually honeybees. They are trucked around the country on flatbed trucks, and they are rented out by people to pollinate their crops and they are essential for the production of almonds, for the production of a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables. It used to be that commercial beekeepers in the United States would make their money off of honey, but because of global honey prices, they really can't make a living off that anymore. Also, habitat loss. The, the places where uh, beekeeper, commercial beekeepers used to be able to take their bees to produce a lot of honey aren't there anymore. So where are commercial beekeepers making their money now? pollination. Well, I think the thing you should remember is if you talk about bees in the 1940s or 1950s, um, there was no such thing as somebody who was in the pollinator business. 
<laughs> um, if you had almond orchards or you had uh, whatever, whatever it is you were growing, the, the native bees were taking care of those things. If you don't bring bees today to those places, those crops won't grow. So I know the question is, do those bees harm the native bees? The answer could be yes, but that's actually not the question. The question is, why do you have to bring them in the first place? And I think the simplest answer is probably too much use of pesticides, um, monocropping, planting the same thing year after year, pulling it out and replanting it, monoculture, which is the same the same thing on a piece of property. The question really isn't for the, the pollinators, the question's for the farmers. European honeybees have created our ability to have um, monoculture crops because we can pick up and move um, you know, thousands of millions of pollinators um, to whatever we want them to do, despite the fact that there are no native pollinators. Um, native bees have pretty much been annihilated. They can't survive in those environments anyways. They can't survive in a location where there's only one flower, like for a single crop, that's only blooming for two or three weeks out of the year. I mean, it's not really a question of native bees or non-native bees. Um, you know, uh, the question before that is, do you want to eat almonds? Do you want to eat citrus? I mean, do you want to have a produce section in your local grocery store? If you don't bring pollinators in, um, you won't have those things. So even with all the problems that commercial pollinating causes, our agricultural system relies on honeybees to produce the food that we eat. We reached out to Daniel Chavez of Sutter Butte's Honey Company, a large-scale commercial pollinator, to get a statement about the impact of pollination on native bees. However, we received no response. The use of honeybees for pollination is just one part of an even bigger problem, the way that our agricultural system is structured. So, what can be done to fix this? So we really need a diversity of bees in order to get the fruits and vegetables that we want, and also, of course, to pollinate all of the wild plants. It would be really great if we could plant habitat around agricultural fields so that wild pollinators would go in and live there, and so that commercial beekeeping could be more localized as well. You know, those bees that were only traveling a maximum of five miles have now unnaturally traveled, you know, hundreds of miles. That's not good for the environment. That's not good for the bees either because you're introducing viruses, diseases, and other things that, that might not be native to the population in a very short amount of time. It's about getting a diverse mix of crops in one spot without the use of pesticides. That's how we can solve climate collapse. That's how we save the bees. <laughs> With the problem as complex and interconnected as pollination, finding and implementing solutions can be a big challenge. Luckily, there are lots of things that we can do as consumers to support our native pollinators. There are two main things. The first is buy organic, because anytime we're buying things um, from places that, where they're not using pesticides, that's really helping the pollinators. Buy local raw honey and buy produce from people you know um, who are not using techniques uh, like monoculture, monocropping, tons of pesticides that are not good for you. And then the second thing, of course, is to support the planting of wildflowers and any food resources for the wild pollinators. Plant native plants, you know, I mean, it's the best thing we can do from on multiple fronts. We can support our native insects. You can support the honeybees that are already there. You're probably going to use less water. It's really important to plant plants that are native to your region because they require a lot less resources, a lot fewer resources, right? So fewer impacts um, on other local species as well. There's over 40 million acres of backyard lawns in the United States. Can you imagine if just a fraction of that were turned into native plants, how we could support our, our native pollinators and insects um, that we rely on? It would, be, it would be dramatic. And if all this buzz about honeybees has you interested in trying your hand at beekeeping, here's what the professionals have to say. If you are passionate and want to become a beekeeper, work with a beekeeper, a local beekeeper, and learn the trade. You know, I've, I've trained many people to be beekeepers, um, but it's a serious undertaking. I don't think it's necessarily bad to want to keep bees, just know all the challenges involved um, and be prepared to help be part of the solution. If people say that their primary interest in having bees is honey, I recommend save your money and your time and just go out and find yourself a local beekeeper and buy their honey and support them. Honey's great, but 
Um, a lot of what we're trying to do with bees is improve the environment that they're in and improve the life of the bees. There are a lot of good reasons to want to keep bees. It's a fascinating hobby. I mean, and it does bring you so much closer to the natural world. I've worked with animals in one capacity or another for most of my life, but nothing could have prepared me for keeping bees and how, how much more sensitive I become to like every shift in the wind, every slight change in temperatures. You just pay so much more attention to it. Mm.